Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, our weekly update on what's happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us take a look at the headlines first. ISRO successfully tests its GSLV Mark III and Q module. Efforts continue to clean up the massive oil spill in Sundarban area of Bangladesh. Carcinogens present in the smoke of mosquito coils and incense sticks, toxic to lungs, reveal studies. Nine new species of tiny bush frogs discovered in the Western Ghats. Gutka ban helped many kick the habit, says new WHO study. And in today's In Focus, we will see the significant achievements of science and scientists in the international arena throughout the year 2014. And now news in details. ISRO on 18th of December successfully tested its ambitious project, the GSLV Mark III launch vehicle. The three stages vehicle is capable of carrying satellites weighing up to 4 kilograms. Along with the launch vehicle, ISRO also tested its new crew module. Let us see the special report from Sri Harikota. The Indian Space Research Organization on 18th December successfully conducted the first experiment flight of its next-generation satellite launch vehicle GSLV Mark III-X. The launch was made from the Satish Dhawan Space Center SHAR Sri Harikota at 9.30 am Indian Standard Time on 18th December. The mission, also known as LVM-3 XK Suborbital Experiment Mission, was intended to test the vehicle's performance during the critical atmospheric phase of its flight. Two massive S-200 solid strap-on boosters, each carrying 207 tons of solid propellants, ignited at vehicle liftoff and after functioning normally, separated 153.5 seconds later. L-110 liquid stage ignited 120 seconds after liftoff, while S-200s were still functioning and carried forward for the next 204.6 seconds. The payload consisted the 3,775 kg crew module atmospheric re-entry experiment or CARE. After 20 minutes and 43 seconds, following the launch at a height of 126 km, CARE separated from the upper stage of GSLV Mark III and re-entered the atmosphere and safely landed over Bay of Bengal with the help of its parachute. CARE safely landed 1,600 km from Sri Harikota thereby successfully concluding the GSLV Mark III X-CARE mission. The GSLV-3 or Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark III is an advanced launch vehicle developed by the Indian Space Research Organization. It is intended to launch satellites into geostationary orbit and as a launcher for an Indian crew vehicle. Last Tuesday, in a major accident, an oil tanker carrying 3,50,000 litres of oil collided with another vessel and sunk in the waters of the famous Sundarbans Nature Reserve in Bangladesh. According to report, 77,000 gallons of oil has spilled into the waters and has already spread into 80 kilometres and is still spreading. Experts worry that the oil spill will drastically affect the plants and animals, especially the rare species that live in the 10,000 square kilometers area of these mangrove forests. Now, concerned authorities are taking massive steps to clean up the spill and mitigate its effects. Here is a report. In recent years, oil spills have emerged as a serious environmental threat. Not only does spilled oil cause direct physical damage to the environment, including plants and animals, but also has a devastating impact on the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Recently, in a totally unexpected incident on 12th December, an oil tanker called Southern Star 7, carrying 350,000 litres of oil, sunk in the waters of the famous Sundarbans Nature Reserve in Bangladesh. Following the accident, in what is being perceived as a major ecological threat, around 77,000 gallons of oil has spilled into the waters which can possibly kill the plants and animals in these areas and adversely affect the marine ecosystem in the Sundarbans. According to the reports, the spilled oil has already spread to 80 km, blackening the shoreline, polluting two major rivers and many interlinked canals in the area. Experts fear that the spilled oil will spread further with serious consequences. 
Ecologists have observed that oil spill has already started affecting the crocodile and dolphin populations in the Sundarbans mangroves and these animals are showing restricted movement in the water. Researchers are also concerned about the long-term impacts of the oil spill and predict that the oil spill might disrupt the fragile and sensitive mangrove ecosystem. Sundarbans is the largest mangrove forest in the world, spread over 10,000 square kilometers. Spilled oil is known to be disastrous to such marine and mangrove vegetation. Physical contact of oil with water animals and birds usually cause the matting of feathers and fur. Dying out of one species in the food chain destroys the entire food chain. Usually detergents in large quantities are used to clear oil spills, which again contribute to large-scale pollution. Under such circumstances, experts will have to try their best to deal with the oil spill in Bangladesh area of the Sundarbans in the best environmental-friendly manner as possible. A recent research study reveals that smoke from mosquito coils and incense sticks not only contain chemicals that are harmful to lungs, but also carcinogens that increase the risk of cancer. We present you a report. While smoke from mosquito coils and incense sticks have long been known to be harmful to lungs, an alarming new study now reveals that they may also lead to cancer. The study has been conducted by the Chess Research Foundation, Pune. The studies conducted by the team of researchers at the foundation proves that mosquito coils and incense sticks contain harmful carcinogens as told by Dr. Sandeep Salvi, director of the foundation during the 48th National Conference of Indian College of Allergy, Asthma and Applied Immunology. Researchers say that the common mosquito repellents used in our homes in the form of coils, mats and liquidators contain harmful chemicals that irritate the lungs and respiratory system. While the emission from the no-smoke coils contains less particulate matter, they are high on carbon monoxide, which is also unsafe for the lungs. The impact is worse when these coils are burned in closed rooms. According to scientists, inhaling the toxic fumes of one mosquito coil in a closed room is equal to smoking roughly 100 cigarettes. On the similar lines, research shows that incense sticks, burned during religious occasions, is rich in toxic compounds of lead, iron and manganese. Hence, while using mosquito coils may seem to protect you from vector-borne diseases like malaria and dengue, they may in fact be contributing to much larger problems like respiratory disorders and cancers. Experts hence prescribe mosquito nets around the bed as the best solution to overcome the harmful effects of chemical repellents. Now, researchers from the National Center for Biological Sciences along with the researchers of Indian Institute of Science have discovered nine new species of bush frogs in the Western Ghats. Bush frogs are very tiny frogs which are found throughout South and Southeast Asia. Adding to the amphibian biodiversity of the Western Ghats, a team of researchers from the National Center for Biological Sciences under the leadership of Dr. S.P. Vijay Kumar in association with researchers of the Indian Institute of Science guided by Dr. Karthik Shankar have discovered nine new species of bush frogs. The tiny frog species have been discovered in the mountain ranges of Western Ghats and belong to the genus Rochestis. These newly discovered bush frog species ranges from specimens as tiny as a thumbnail to brightly colored and plain slimy varieties. These species have been traced back to a common ancestor that existed millions of years ago. According to the researchers, the discovery not only adds to the knowledge of biodiversity but also provides important insights into the evolutionary history of the Western Ghats. It is believed that the discovery will help bridge many gaps in the understanding of the ecological, evolutionary and biogeographic processes that has helped in the diversification and evolution of bush frogs. The results of the study have been published in the International Journal Zootaxa. Bush frogs are miniature frogs distributed throughout South and Southeast Asia. Currently, there are 52 known species of Rauchesters in the Western Ghats. Western Ghats being a biological hotspot is home to many species of frogs. Earlier this year, a similar discovery of 14 dancing frogs was made from the same region.
WHO recently conducted a study on the use of gutka in seven states of India, the results of which are highly positive and encouraging. The study reveals that strict laws banning gutka has helped reduce the consumption of gutka and has also helped many to overcome this addiction. Stringent regulatory measures on harmful products like tobacco can go a long way in reducing the consumption and curbing the habit. This has become evident from a study conducted by the World Health Organization Country Office for India in collaboration with the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Researchers have studied the consumption pattern of gutka in seven states in India, namely Assam, Bihar, Gujarat, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha and the national capital region where gutka is currently banned. It was reported from the study that a substantial proportion of respondents in each state, ranging from 41 to 88 percent, quit using gutka because of the ban. While a large percent has completely quit gutka due to non-availability, a small portion of the respondents who continue to use pre-packaged gutka reported that they consume less tobacco since the ban. Gutka, which is a chewable form of tobacco, is a common addiction among Indian population. According to WHO estimates, India is the world's largest consumer of smokeless tobacco and 26% of adults use smokeless tobacco. According to experts, gutka is the most dangerous form of tobacco as it is known to contain nearly 4,000 chemicals of which at least 40 are known to cause cancer. Unlike the smoke form of tobacco, the toxic compounds in gutka directly reach the system and lead to various disorders including ulcers, gangrene, cancers of mouth, throat, lung and oesophagus, heart disease and related ailments. According to statistics, nearly 1 million people die in India every year because of tobacco use. The study conducted by WHO is a clear indication that strict measures can and need to be adopted to bring down the use of tobacco in the country and save the population from the fatal effects of tobacco and related products. Vigyan Prasad during February will conduct the 5th Rashtriya Vigyan Chal Chitra Mela at Lucknow. Interested candidates and teams can submit their entries on various topics of science under different contest categories. The last date for the submission of entries is 31st of December 2014. The 5th National Science Film Festival and Competition 2015, popular as the Rashtriya Vigyan Chal Chitra Mela or RVCM, is fast drawing to a close as the last date of submission, 31st December, draws nearer. Once the contest closes, entries will be shortlisted for screening and final round of contests which will be held during 4th to the 8th of February 2015 in regional science city Lucknow. The prestigious Beaver Award which includes Golden, Silver and Bronze Beaver Awards along with cash prizes, trophies and certificates await the winners. Besides the Beaver Awards, there are also special awards for technical excellence in cinematography, editing, graphics, animation and special effects, and sound recording and design. RVCM 2015 is open for science, environment, health and technology based films produced between 1st October 2013 and 15th December 2014. The contest is open to government, non-government institutions, individual producers, production agencies, media centers, television channels, academic and research institutions, universities and schools. While previously the last date of submission was 15th December, the deadline has been extended to 31st December 2014 to facilitate more participation. This is the fifth edition of uh, the Science Film Festival. Um, Vigyan Prasad is grateful to leaders in this field who have always been with us. We have grown with the guidance of such uh, very, very eminent people in the past as uh, Sri Amol Palekar and then Sri Nazar. The, the most unique aspect of the whole initiative is inviting film-based output uh, from several stakeholder groups in our society right from students and amateurs to um, people engaged in producing films in various categories. Uh, the cross-cutting aspect of all of this is communicating the fundamentals, the principles of science, the method of science as it's called. Rashtriya Vigyan Chalchitra Mela is conducted annually by Vigyan Prasar 
under the aegis of Department of Science and Technology in association with National Council of Science Museums under the Ministry of Culture. Films can be submitted under five different categories which include popular science film to communicate and develop scientific temper with different target audiences, film on science, technology and innovation, film on science made by students pursuing degrees or diplomas and how do I see science which includes films made by students of class 6 to 12. National Science Film Festival 2015 जो शेड्यूल है लखनऊ में 4 से 8 फरवरी 2015 को और इसमें खास तौर पे हमने बच्चों के लिए एक कैटेगरीज बनाई हैं जो क्लास 6 टू 12 के बच्चे हैं और यूनिवर्सिटी जो स्कॉलर्स हैं जो यूजी पीजी के स्टूडेंट्स हैं अगर वो कुछ फिल्म निर्माण कर रहे हैं और हमारे प्रोफेशनल फिल्म मेकर्स हमारे टीवी चैनल्स हमारे प्रोडक्शन हाउसेस अगर वो साइंस एनवायरनमेंट नेचर या हेल्थ से जुड़ी कोई फिल्म बनाते हैं तो ये मैं समझता हूं कि एक अकेला प्लेटफार्म है नेशनल लेवल पे जो उनको सम्मानित करता है नेशनल बेवर अवार्ड जो हमने गोल्डन सिल्वर और ब्रॉन्ज बेवर अवार्ड इसमें हमने घोषित किए हैं और हमें खुशी है ये बताते हुए कि पिछले 4 सालों में बहुत उत्साह देखने को मिला देश में for those interested in submitting entries before 31st December 2014, the details of the contest is available at the Vigyan Prasar website www.vigyanprasar.gov.in. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. The year 2014 is soon drawing to a close. The year has been much successful in terms of scientific achievements and has opened many new vistas in the areas of science and technology across the world. In today's in-depth segment, we will take a stock of the global achievements in science during 2014. With a lot of scientific achievements and some concerns, the year 2014 fast draws to an end as 31st December approaches. The United Nations had declared 2014 as the International Year of Family Farming and Crystallography. Needless to say that 2014 has been an eventful year in terms of world scientific achievements. From Mangalyaan to energy-saving white light sources, 2014 has indeed opened many new avenues in the realm of science and technology. While it is certain that these scientific feats will help make the world a better place and advance the existing knowledge and understanding, let us take a look at the greatest and the most interesting scientific breakthroughs of 2014 at a global level. January 2014, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope captures the deepest image ever taken of a galaxy cluster not long after the Big Bang and the Sloan Digital Telescope measured the distance to galaxies 6 billion light-years away to an accuracy of just 1%. In February 2014, a team of researchers from the École Polytechnique Pedral da Lausanne, Switzerland and the Scuola Superiore Saint Anna, Italy developed a new prosthetic, a bionic hand that could restore the sense of touch for a Denmark man who lost his left hand nine years ago. The bionic hand includes surgically implanted electrodes which helps the amputee feel. This is the first time sensory feedback has been restored to an amputee and marks a major revolution in healthcare. In March 2014, scientists announced the discovery of gravitational waves, the ripple in space-time, that are thought to be the first tremors of the Big Bang. Researchers of Howard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics using a technique called Bicep 2 Telescope and came up with solid evidence to prove that the universe is indeed expanding. The background imaging of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization 2 or Bicep 2 experiment at the South Pole was used to study the residual energy of the Big Bang called the Cosmic Microwave Background or CMB. In April 2014, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope spotted an Earth cousin planet that is similar in size to Earth. The planet that was named Kepler 186f circles a red dwarf star and is about 490 light years from Earth. It is predicted that the planet might have water and the habitable conditions required to sustain life. 
In May 2014, the Mayo Clinic USA published a breakthrough study in which they treated a 50-year-old female patient's aggressive blood cancer with the measles vaccine. It was reported that the patient, after being injected with a single enormous dose of the measles vaccine, showed complete regression of cancer. The study marks a milestone in cancer therapy and gives new hope for treating cancers using intravenous injections of viruses. In June 2014, an international team of dentists announced the discovery of a novel self-repair technique of the teeth. The technique is expected to replace the painful procedures, drills and cavity fills and makes use of minor electric currents to accelerate the natural processes by which teeth repair themselves. This non-invasive technique is painless and does not require any drills or injections. In July 2014, Japanese plant physiologist Shigeharu Shimamura came up with a new idea of growing food using LED as a light source. The researchers caught the world's attention when he converted a former Sony Corporation semiconductor factory into the world's largest indoor farm. The farm is lit with special LED fixtures which emit light wavelengths optimal for plant growth. Shortly after opening, it was already producing 10,000 heads of lettuce per day. And what are the contributions of science to this week's history? We shall learn in our next segment, History of Science. On 22nd December 1887, the famous Indian mathematician Srinivas Ramanujan was born. He was the first Indian to be elected as a fellow of Trinity College. Within a short lifespan, he formulated approximately 120 theorems and mathematical formulae. A few of them were understood and utilized by the scholars years after his death. On 24th December 1818, the English physicist James Prescott Joule was born. He established the interrelation between heat energy and the mechanical work done which is known as the principle of conservation of energy. In his honor, the SI unit of energy is named after him, that is Joel. On 25th December 1642, the famous English scientist Isaac Newton was born. He not only discovered gravity and gravitational force but also formulated the three laws of motion. He was the first person to discover that white light when passed through a prism can split into seven different colors. The world's first reflecting telescope was also invented by him. On 27th December 1822, the renowned French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pasteur was born. He developed the pasteurization process in order to keep the fluids germ-free for a long period of time. Under this method, the fluid is heated to a specific temperature which kills the microbacteria but does not change the properties of the fluid. He also discovered the concept of immunization and made the first vaccine against rabies. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our special segment, Science Express. A team of researchers from the Natural History Museum of Denmark has conducted a genetic study that sheds light on the history of horse domestication. The study reveals that changes in almost 125 genes specially related to those that control the skeletal muscles, balance, coordination, cardiac strength and social behavior involving learning, fear response and agreeableness differentiates the wild horses from the animals that could be tamed and domesticated for various purposes. The study which involved comparing the DNA from 29 horse bones discovered in the Siberian permafrost dating from 16,000 and 43,000 years ago to five modern domesticated breeds demystifies the evolutionary history of horse and equine domestication. The US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has warned that the world is heading for the hottest year ahead and the past November was the seventh warmest November since 1880. Estimates show that if December is at least 0.42 degrees Celsius warmer than the 20th century average, 2014 will be the hottest year on record. The previous three warmest years on record are 2010, 2005 and 1998. 
in a major workshop being organized at Port Blair by the National Institute of Oceanography, policymakers and scientists from the SARC countries have begun deliberations on climate change, which is adversely affecting ocean and marine life in the region. Policymakers from four SARC countries, including India, Bangladesh, Maldives, and Sri Lanka, are participating in the workshop. The team of experts will discuss the causes and effects of the climate change and devise measures to mitigate the effects. NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution MAVEN mission has collected crucial data that reveals how Mars lost its atmosphere to space over time. MAVEN has deciphered a new process by which the solar wind can penetrate deep into the atmosphere of Mars instead of deflecting. The data collected by MAVEN also shows how ions gain energy and escape from the atmosphere. MAVEN has provided the first comprehensive measurements of the composition of Mars's upper atmosphere and electrically charged ionosphere. In encouraging new results, NASA's Curiosity rover has for the first time detected organic molecules on Mars. The organic molecules were detected in a drill sample of the sheep bed mudstone in Gale Crater. The researchers are not sure whether the organic molecules have come from ancient Martian life or from non-biological chemical reactions. However, the study might give important clues about possibility of extraterrestrial life. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned and think scientific. <laughs>